Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, honorable members. It is clear to this honorable house that at the point in time when I was appointed to this honorable house, that I was engaged otherwise outside of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I had left the state on the 4th of January 2014 to take on the assignment. And I traveled to St. Vincent to participate in the estimates and flew back to continue my assignment overseas, Mr. Speaker. So I want to make it very clear from the get-go that I did not abandon the people's parliament without just cause. Mr. Speaker, the other point I wish to make is this. Every arrangement was in place for me to arrive in St. Vincent last night. I left the BVI, well, I was supposed to leave at about 2.20 p.m. And Liat sat on the tarmac at Letsom International in excess of an hour and a half, passengers on the plane, because there were problems with the craft. And then when we finally left and got into St. Martin for the problems, so we had to overnight in Antigua. As a consequence, I showed up in this honorable house late this morning. That is the reason for my lateness this morning. You could always say it's my business. I'm decent to provide the explanation to the house, and that is what I am doing, because I feel obligated. Mr. Speaker, I will now turn to the contribution that I wish to make with regards to the budget for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the appropriation bill. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, Mr. Speaker, I am delighted to make this my very first contribution in the formal sense to the budgetary debate of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I said in a formal sense because last year I had an opportunity to look at the estimate and the budget presented by the Honorable Minister of Finance. And of course, in an informal setting, Mr. Speaker, I spoke candidly to, to those exercises. For this presentation, please, Mr. Speaker, I will seek to navigate my way through the Ministry of Social Development and address matters touching and concerning issues of youth, sports, in some regards, agriculture, and of course, I will interpose my presentation, Mr. Speaker, with matters that are attendant to the constituency of South Central Windward. My constituency. Thank you very much. Well, if you could be presumptuous, I could be presumptuous too. Yes, you're more than presumptuous. Let's, let's, let's carry on with the people's business. Mr. Speaker, I know that there'll be some banter, and I am prepared, I am prepared for some banter, but the parliament must be assured that I'm going to keep my focus and I'm going to make my presentation. Right. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I did make mention of the constituency of South Central Windward because indeed, in my view, it's a constituency that has been sidelined and abandoned and is in need of proper representation. And that's why I made the statement I made. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Social Development has a number of responsibilities. I, I don't need to read. I am picking my points. And <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am going to address the issues in that particular ministry. And of course, I understand that I am not permitted to read, but I also understand that I am permitted from time to time to make reference to my notes. And so when I do that, I don't want it to be misinterpreted at all. Well, I won't take you on. I'll take on somebody else, I can promise you that. Mr. Speaker, I consider this 
contribution to be a most important contribution because the ministry in question is the ministry that addresses matters pertinent to the poor and the vulnerable. And because this country has quite a number of poor and vulnerable people, it is important that we look at that particular ministry with clear eyes. Mr. Speaker, on page 211 of the estimates, and here I'm going to refer to, to the document, please, Mr. Speaker, the mission statement of that ministry is laid out on that page. And the mission statement of the ministry is to engage in social transformation through social empowerment, social protection, and social justice using national mobilization, social development, youth, etc. That is what the ministry says it sets out to do from a strategic vantage point. Mr. Speaker, we have to look at what the ministry undertook in the year 2018. Because if we have to properly assess what is being offered to be done in 2019, we have to do some retrospection. It is in my, res my respectful view, Mr. Speaker, that we understand where we have come from to get a proper understanding as to where we are and we'll have a deeper appreciation as to where we are going. And so, I want to spend some time to look at some of the strategic viewpoints of the ministry and what were some of the achievements of the ministry in the period under review. Mr. Speaker, it is seen from the report of that particular ministry that they sought to address the issue of poverty reduction. And they spoke about, in the strategic document, about reducing the level of poverty through the social landscape. And then we are tossed, Mr. Speaker, a figure of 11,044 citizens having been assisted by that particular ministry during the period of the fiscal year 2018. And the question may be asked, what is the relevance, what is the importance of underscoring or pointing out this particular figure? Mr. Speaker, honorable members, it is important that we look at that figure in the context of what we say we are doing in addressing the issue of poverty in this country. And so when the concept is to transition St. Vincent and the Grenadines from welfare to workfare, and I want to say that again, the, the concept must be, Mr. Speaker, to transition St. Vincent and the Grenadines from welfare to workfare. When you have, Mr. Speaker, when you have in a country of 110,000 people and thereabouts, and of that 110, you have 11,000 plus people who are direct recipients of poor relief, then, Mr. Speaker, it gives you a classical picture of where we are. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker I rise on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Senator is misleading the House. 11,000 persons are not on poor relief. How many persons are on, are on relief, Honorable Minister? If he was listening yesterday, Mr. Speaker, you would have been. Tell us so that we can 4,600 persons are on public assistance. Wow. 2,000 less than what we had in the, in, the, in the previous year. You can't miss the parliament and come here to mislead. Yeah, they really want to Mr. Mr. Speaker, 
since, since my honorable friend, the honorable representative for the constituency of South Windward is indicating that I am misrepresenting. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, except that my identification of the honorable member is incorrect, then Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker I am not afraid to recognize the ministry of the Honorable Minister. I have no difficulty with that. And so, Mr. How Speaker... Did, how, did you, how did you address him? Mr. Mr. Speaker, I have addressed him as the Parli Honorable Parliamentary Representative But the rules for, allow for, for, that, for that designation? Yes, please, Mr. Speaker. That he is can, the issue. But he can... He can be rep he can be he can, he can be no but let's let's not be detained by that please he's the, he just said that he's not prepared to um he's he doesn't have a problem seeing him oh lord but that is not disrespectful oh lord let's let us go let's go on um let's let's go on please mr mr speaker the minister the representative is the same thing mr speaker mr speaker honorable members the honorable minister Yes, I'll, I'll do it. I, if I am incorrect, I am new to this house, and I'm going to open myself to correction when I'm incorrect. So, Mr. Speaker, I am going to go to page 211 of the estimates and then seek the clarification. And if I am wrong, I am so humbled by it. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, under Strategic Priorities 2018, to assist in poverty reduction through social protection. Under comments, Mr. Speaker, the following programs provide a disaggregation of cash or in-kind transfer services offered by type and quantum of people equivalent to a minimum of 67.96% of the poor nationally. Program, program target, number of individuals. Public assistance, 11,044. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. You don't, you can't say shut up. Mr. Speaker. I rise on a point of order, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Public assistance is not poor relief, Mr. Speaker. Public assistance means all the services that we provide. That's Poor relief has a specific That's quantum. That's the point. And if you don't understand, you have to listen and learn. You, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, please proceed, Mr. Speaker, honourable members. <laughs> but. I hope you take. I hope you take the learning from the from the yes, minister. Yes, please, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I I understand the separation that the honourable minister has provided for the parliament. Where you saying, where he is he's saying to this honourable house that that represents the totality of persons getting services as poor people in Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. So. Mr. Speaker, I am not suggesting that there is anything wrong with poor people getting assistance. Well, we have gone past that. You see, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, let, let him proceed. Mr. Speaker. And I don't understand why members on your own side are, uh, um, are doing that. Please proceed. Yes, 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 Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the point has been made. The clarification has been had. But there are those who want to live in the history of the point. Let them reside there. I'm going to move on. Mr. Speaker. Well, he's, Mr. Speaker, I have accepted he said the he's correction. Benefited from the learning. That is not who I am. So don't try to distract me like that. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. As I continue this presentation, I would go on to say, that 11,044 Vincentian citizens had to benefit out of a population of 110 from some form of public assistance. That says, Mr. Speaker, that we have 11,000 people in this country who are catching their 
difficult times. Well, except you're telling me, if you say, oh, Mr. Speaker, you're suggesting that the people, these 11,000 people are well-off people who you're still giving state resources? So you either accept that they're not doing well or you accept that they're doing well. So the point is, you're not going to engage me in your destruction. I am going to move on. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when, Mr. Speaker, I was not in the House, but I have, I have quite a synopsis of the contribution made by certain people in this House. So you don't get a strength on my presentation today. No, not going to happen. You had your own time. You had your own time. You had your own time. Go ahead, go ahead. Carry on. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, when we look at pages two and six, yes, I get that. Telegraph well. Page two and six to page two to four of the estimates, Mr. Speaker. Yes, please, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to look at what were some of the strategic activities for 2018. Because, you see, Mr. Speaker, it is important to look at them in the context of the projections for 2019 so that we can assess really what have we done to justify what we are proposing to happen in the ensuing period. Mr. Speaker, under child development, the ministry proposed to provide residential services to protect 30 boys in need of care and rehabilitation by December 15, 2018. Mr. Speaker, that pause was deliberate. In this whole country of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as an objective, the ministry felt that a proper workable objective in all of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is to try to protect 30 boys. 30, Mr. Speaker. 30 boys, I read it, in need of rehabilitation. In need of care and rehabilitation, I read it. I'm, I, am, I, I have read it. I am taking the learning, so let us go on. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, then it went on to say, on page 217, improve access to behavioral modification program to students in three additional communities. This was implemented in four communities. And so if you, if you grade, you'll say that the, the ministry performed better than expected. And the ministry ought to be congratulated for that. Mr. Speaker, yeah. I then, if, if you happen to be Jesus, to be, to be able to be in more, in more than one place at the same time, then fine, but I am not. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, yeah. well, you, you must let somebody else start because your time is coming. I am coming in my presentation when I shall deal with what is the poorest example of representation in all of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You wait, you wait, your time is coming. When you had the time to present, the, the parliament couldn't be hear you. you. This is your time, man. This is your time. The, I just start, and you can't sit down over the quiet now. I, I am sure, I am sure, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want the records of this parliament to show that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture was quiet as a lamb until I walked into this house. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Mr. 
Yes. Organize yourselves. The people of this country, the people of this country, knowing how quiet you are, would understand that there's a particular reason that provokes your disquiet. Yes. Mr. Speaker. You do what? Try to do what? Don't borrow that boy. Catch up, mana play, mana pepper. You don't borrow that. You don't borrow that. You don't borrow that. You don't borrow that. <laughs> yes. No. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Please, Speaker, if I may. Please let the honorable member proceed. Mr. Please. Speaker, if I may. Please. I anticipated this, and I'm going to go on to look at what have been put to us as the projections for 2019. Yes, rolling, rolling nice. Yes. Mr. Speaker, the ministry proposes to do a number of things. Amongst them, to assist in poverty reduction through the social protection landscape. And I'm saying that because it came up before, and we have the repetition of what is set out to be achieved by the ministry, and there's not a fundamental problem with it. Because if you set out to achieve something in year one, and you've gone this far with it, one would expect that you'll continue along that particular line. So there's not a, a, a fundamental difficulty with the concept itself. Where I have the difficulty, Mr. Speaker, is that you have situation in the ministry where certain things which were to, be, to have been achieved in 2018 were not achieved or were poorly achieved, and the same demarcation is set for 2019. It is suggesting to me one of two things. One is either the ministry is not serious about satisfying the objective set in 2018 and to build on it in 2019, or there was simply just the cut and paste of 2018 into 2019. I may be wrong, but if I am wrong, then let me be. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we have as an objective on the youth development in 2018, where 16 communities were to be targeted. The comment, the resultant, 64 youth finally were targeted. So, whereas communities were to be targeted, when you look at the result, we saw the result being reduced to 64 individuals as opposed to 16 communities. And we have to assess that for what it is worth. And I am not casting a portion on the hard-working civil servants of this country. What I am saying, Mr. Speaker, is that you, you, you tell us via the estimates for 2018 that I'm going to focus on 16 communities, and when it's time to show your report card, you tell me on the report card. You can't tell me if it is one community that you had these 64 pe persons from. So what you do is that you, you pace it as 64 persons, but not a reflection, not an assessment of how many communities indeed and in fact were, were actually worked with. And that, to me, Mr. Speaker, is a serious deficit on the part of the ministry. Mr. Speaker, youth in agriculture. I don't know that we can say, Mr. Speaker, that we have seen any seriousness on the part of the government to involve young people in agriculture as a sector to drive St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We've not seen that serious result. And Mr. Speaker, when we look back on the budgetary presentation by the Minister of Finance in 2018, it was pointed out that agriculture was accepted and admitted to being one of the cornerstones for economic development in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I said in the informal response that we were stringing together a number of phrases because one, either they sounded well, or two, they were reflected in the World Bank assessment and it was important to show some reflection in the presentation of what the World Bank did say in their report. And it, it, in my mind, amounted to nothing more than that. 
So let's look to see what the result was in that regard. Mr. Speaker, the ministry then decided that they were going to work with young people in agriculture. And we have not seen the results in 2018, and what we have in 2019 is to simply, again, place back in the estimates. So in 2018, they want to implement the Youth in Agriculture program targeting 20 youths to become farmers by December 2018. The response? The initiative is ongoing. Mr. Speaker, on a point of, of order. The honourable member... What is the point of order you make, you're standing on? Speaker, what? I'm saying the, the honourable member is misleading the House. Thank you. The Youth in Agriculture program, if you was here yesterday, is in place in the community of, over, of Overland. We targeted 25 young persons, and I said yesterday that we have used the lands at the school for the purposes of that, and we have also engaged in two other communities mm -hmm. in relation to this program. Mr. Speaker, I would like to know what I said to mislead this Honorable House, because I don't want to mislead the House. So I am prepared to take my seat again and let the Honorable Minister say to this Honorable House what I did say to this House proceed, that was misleading. Proceed, proceed, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an indication of you are not agreeing. Mr. Speaker, I am reading directly from the estimates of 2019. So if I am misleading, it meant that the government misled the House with their, with their document. It reads, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, on page 219, under youth development, it is the fourth, if I could call it bullet point, on page 219, Mr. Speaker. Implement the youth in agriculture program targeting 20 youth to become farmers by December 2018. That is what I read, and I'm misleading the house with it. Mr. Speaker, if, if you agree that that was misleading, then again, I will do the humble thing. Proceed, Honourable Member. Proceed. So, Please proceed. So, so, Mr. Speaker, but that is the point at which you rose on a point of order. I wasn't here yesterday. You are here today. You're not paying attention. Mr. Pro Speaker, I was reading the comments at that point when I was distracted. This initiative is ongoing. That's why I got to. The division with technical assistance from the Ministry of Agriculture is implemented, implementing two Mr. Speaker, two pilot on a, programs. On a, on a point of order. Seventeen. Standing on a point of order. What's I, the point of order, honourable member? Point of order is that I'm wondering if it is proper for the honourable member to be referring to the estimates in the way he is doing in this debate on the appropriation bill. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. What, what, what prevents him from referring to the estimates? Mr. Speaker, with your, with your no, leave... Hold on, please. Hold on. The Honourable Member is standing on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, uh, the, we, we need, the standing orders make it clear that there is a difference and a distinction between the debate for the estimates and the debate for the appropriation bill, and it goes on to circumscribe what the scope of the debate should be for the estimates and the appropriation bill accordingly. You would know, Mr. Speaker, that the estimates come to this House on a which, which, what, 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 is the, what is the standing order point that you, you are standing on, Honourable Member? Fine, that it is not appropriate for the Honourable Member to be present. Where in the standing order? Fine. So, but let me refer you to the standing order. That no. I, that I, I will refer you to standing order 62.3. It says, sit down for a minute, please. We are talking about presentation and second reading of the appropriation bill. 62.3 says, after the Minister of Finance has made his budget speech, the motion for second reading of the bill shall be seconded formally and, de listen to this part, debate thereon shall commence the following day. 
and shall be confined to the financial and economic state of the country and the general principles of government policy and administration as indicated in the estimates. So Mr. Speaker, if we take it from 60 to 1, any bill containing the estimated financial requirement for expenditure on all the services of the government and the current or succeeding financial year shall be known as an appropriation bill. The estimates containing the details of the said financial requirements shall be laid on the table when the appropriation bill is presented. After the appropriation bill has been introduced and read a first time, the motion for, a seconding, for, a second, for the second reading of the bill shall be proposed forthwith and the Minister of Finance shall make his annual financial statement or budget speech. And, and subclause clause three, after the Minister of Finance has made his budget speech, the motion for the second reading of the bill shall be seconded formally, and the debate thereon shall commence, and the following, on the, commence the following day, and shall be confined to the financial and economic state of the country, the financial and economic state of the country, and the general principles of government, government policy and administration. Mr. Speaker. Yes. So it is to be confined to the economic state of the country and the general principles of government policy and administration. I, Mr. Speaker, it is clear that the Honorable Member. Honorable Member, wants please sit down. Please sit down. You, you, you're, not com you're not complying with the, with the rule, Section 623. Honorable Senator, please well, continue. Well, Mr. Speaker, we, we Honorable you, Mr. Speaker. Member, please sit down. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please sit down. The rule is clear. Yeah, I want you to be respectful. The rule is clear. The rule is clear. The rule is clear. It is related to the general principles of government. The rule is clear, Honorable Member. You have to read the whole thing. I read it. So why did, were you conveniently mis leaving out the other part? Which other part? The rule is clear. Please continue, Honorable Representative. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Come on. Mr. Speaker, let me, let me finish that particular section under the comment section, which my which the Honorable Minister of Social Development wanted me to complete, where it says, the division with technical assistance from the Ministry of Agriculture is implementing two pilot programs. 17 youths are being trained in the agribusiness practices and the farm has been established where produce are sold wholesale to Vinci Fresh. Additionally, Two other communities have begun the process to establish similar youth-based farms in their communities. Again, Mr. Speaker, I have raised this point because when you look at what is proposed for 2019 under, child, under youth, development, youth development, Mr. Speaker, you would see, again, repeated Collaborate with the Ministry of Agriculture. That's on page 227. Now, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to do the financial connection so that the whole picture is had. Collaborate with the Ministry of Agriculture in the implementation of the Youth in Agriculture program, transitioning 30 youths to become farmers by December 2019. So I've, I've pointed out firstly where it was the objective in 2018 at a policy position, but we have not had any particular indication as to the success of that particular policy position. It is now repeated in 2019 to be a sustained policy position, Mr. Speaker. And then we go to the financial arrangement on page 1, 229 of the estimates. And but under... I don't remember, I don't remember. You can, if you proceed in the way in which you're proceeding, you're going to debate the estimates. So, and we have gone past that. The, 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 the rule as was raised in 62.3, allows you to make reference to the estimates, but that has to be wrapped into a conversation about the appropriations. Yes, so Mr. if Mr. you're Speaker. going to continue that road, you are simply going to confirm the objection which the Honorable Minister felt had. Mr. Speaker, I take your guidance firmly on this matter. The point I was making, Mr. Speaker, is that we, as a policy position, that there could not be any seriousness, because that is the point I was making, that there could not but be any yeah, seriousness. But, but you can debate the estimates again. Mr. You, Speaker, 
with all due respect, I am not debating the estimate. In order for so you to have to wrap that in the context of the appropriation bill. And that's the point I'm making. I'm saying. So the whole question about analyzing 2017 and 2018, that, that's a conversation for the estimates. M M Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, whilst I'm going to be constantly open to your, your teachings and instructions on this particular matter, the point I am making, Mr. Speaker, is that from a policy position in the estimates for 2019, in not the estimates, sorry, the budgets for 2019, that the government cannot be serious about agriculture in the manner in which it is proposing to involve young people. And that is the point that I am making. But, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, no, he did say he would speak to agriculture as well. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, if it is difficult to understand where there's a combination of issues, then I can't help, but I will speak to it in that sense. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the social assistance program that, my, that the Honorable Minister spoke to, where he said that it's not poor relief for the 11,000 plus, it is the entire package of persons getting assistance. Mr. Speaker, we know, and I'm going to speak very guardedly because I'm aware of the restrictions, but there are serious challenges of that program in the manner in which it is managed in the ministry. Mr. Speaker, we are all aware that we have had already in this country a young woman from the North Windward side of this country convicted I could speak to this one because there is a conviction. Convicted in the court of this country. For what? Being able to go and access monies that were intended, that were supposed to be paid under the management of this ministry to other persons. And I say, attack the lady. I will tell you why I am not only going at the lady. Don't go there, Mr. Speaker. It is my understanding, I am attacking the lack of accountability. I am not attacking the, the, the dishonesty. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it is my understanding that where you have beneficiaries on this program, that you have to have, at the end of that particular fiscal year, the issuance of live certificates. Right. Mr. Speaker, if I am correct, that certificate is supposed to send a message to the managers in the ministry that this person, Tom or Mary's name, ought to remain on the list of beneficiaries because that person is still alive and is in need of help. And I'm going to go to where the accountability issue lies. Mr. Speaker, a number of the names on that list for which monies were collected, dead people, Dead people. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I, I take it that the Honorable Member, the Honorable Minister of Tourism, clearly does not see the responsibility of government to ensure, to ensure, Mr. Speaker, if it is that the program was properly managed by the ministry, that could have never happened. That's not true. That's not true. Mr. Speaker, because it is clear, how could you have the person name to receive social assistance when that person is dead? So you are saying in the best fertilized fields we couldn't have weeds? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there we go. Mr. Speaker, I am saying that much more has to be done in that ministry to ensure that That's this program point. is not continuously taken advantage of. That's a the ministry point. must tighten its governance procedures and ensure that they protect the taxpayers' dollars. So I am, I am, I am put in in this house, Mr. Speaker, my difficulty with that particular program. Mr. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, 
Where the answers? Yes. Mr. Speaker, you know, you know when you listen to the analogy on the other side, it's like, it's like a, a man who says, I am not happy with the job that I have, so I am going to look for a better job. Then he leaves, then he leaves. You, <laughs> Mr. You, I don't, I don't remember you have eight minutes. English, English is, English, English is, Mr. Speaker, I hope, <laughs> I, I hope, Mr. Speaker, that in the face of, of the constant disruption that your speaker, your speakership would be gracious enough to give me. I don't remember, remember. I don't remember. Yes, please. You started at 12.40. I am, I'm going look to continue. At the, look at this clock and take your guard M Mr. from speaker, the fact that you have got eight minutes. Mr. Speaker, I deserve some injury time. And the Minister of Finance as well has spoken to it. Mr. Speaker, the government proposes to embark on a program that is called PAVE. And without being present in the House, my notation in my column was rightfully, Guti Track have now become PAVE. Mr. Speaker, I am happy, I am happy that after 17 years, the government has finally recognized the importance of these social development projects. It is a properly, properly borrowed concept. That's what I would say. And Mr. Speaker, let's, yes, let's hope it is properly managed. But that's not what I really want to say in totality. What I want to say on that, Mr. Speaker, and to the Honourable Minister of Finance, is that there are a number of villages and areas in the constituency of South Central Windward that can properly benefit from that project. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, if the representative not speaking to the project in a positive way and how it could benefit the constituents, I will. So, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I, I guess those who spoke about what, Chat what Chateau did or all wrong when Chateau was alive, I will say no more about that. I will, I will go to the constituency and identify me for the Honorable Minister of Finance and the Minister, Honorable Minister of Works some of the projects that I am of the view that will be critical to benefit under the PAVE project that you have so rightly put forward. Mr. Speaker, in higher low months, when you get going down to the church that is being led by Bishop Roban, that piece of road is in dire need of some attention. And so I am asking the Honorable Minister of Finance and the Honorable Minister of Works to ensure that that piece of road gets the attention it deserves. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if the Honorable Member will give way. I'll yes. give way. I, I, I just want to assure you, Honourable Member, that we have had presentations of at least 30 projects in each constituency. 30. Yeah. On average, 30. Now we have to sift through that to fit $14.1 million. So I hear you. But <laughs> huh? I, I have asked, I have, I have visited. In the, absence, in the absence of an executive member, a member of the executive, you know, in, a, in, a, in the absence of an executive member, the Minister of Works has his way of finding out things. Right? Okay. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I, I still consider my responsibility to identify in the short time that I have some of those projects that I am saying deserve the attention because, Mr. Speaker, for the last how many years we have had the situation with that road. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in New Grounds, when you get to the junction opposite where there's an office with some red paintings on it, you head across to the right where a young lady by the name of Marva Humphrey and Grand Roberts and others live down there. Mr. Speaker, that piece of road is in dire need of, of, of some attention, and again, I'm inviting the honorable ministers to give some attention to it. I am calling the name because it does two things. The, the people in the constituency would know that I'm connected with their issues and know that I'm representing them. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in 
in Chapman's, there's a piece of road called Canaan. I received so many reports from the residents using the Canaan Road. They say even when it is not raining and they seek to go to their homes, they're falling down on their backsides. Mr. Speaker, I cannot come here and look at a budget of over a billion dollars and not say that I want a piece of that billion dollars to go to the constituent South Central Windward under the PAVE program. I realize, yes, Mr. Speaker, I realize that when the Honorable Minister of Works spoke to what are some of the things that he hopes to achieve in that ministry, he pointed out, Mr. Speaker, under the other works program, he identified Lorders, he also identified Chapman's as two of the areas that would get some attention. And I, I, was, I was happy to hear him say that. I actually tapped the table because the people of Chapman's deserve to have better road network. Mr. Speaker, if you get to Chapman's and you get to where Peter lives and you head southward, if you're going towards the Diamond Junction, we have as present, and if anybody in Chapman's listening to me now, you could take your cell phone and go and snap it and put it for the world to see. We have five oil drums, five oil drums that are there providing protection to the people who are using that road. The road is so badly positioned, Mr. Speaker. The, the underbelly of the road is gone. If, Mr. Speaker, if a heavy vehicle was to drive in that area, and I, because he must be aware of it. You know how many times I've spoken about this? Mr. Speaker, if, the, if, the, if a driver tries to pull away from the massive crater on the right and verges too close to the left, you could have a, an entire collapse in that piece of road and we could possibly have death in the house that is lying below the road. That piece of road deserves attention. No, Mr. Speaker, I want to say, to the Honorable Minister of Finance and Works, that whereas I'm putting other project, other project proposals on the table, other areas that should be at, given attention, that one must go as number one because the Samsung's lives are in danger and I want for their lives to be protected. Mr. Speaker, you took two minutes of my time moments ago. I remember Speaker, you're running against time. Mr. Speaker, let me make this, let me make this other point. I want to make this point with regards to the medicinal cannabis industry. Mr. Speaker, I know that a number of persons have made arguments as to what should happen with regards to those persons with a small amount of cannabis in their possession. And Mr. Speaker, I have said, and I have continued to say, I will continue to say, in seeking the support of my colleagues on this, this side of the house, that youngsters from Greggs and Lowman's and Lauders and Chapman's and Hadley's Village and Montgrenon and New Grounds and Long Peace should not, Mr. Speaker, should not be arrested by the police if they are found with a very small portion of marijuana. 20 ounces at least, Mr. Speaker. Well, I'm saying. I well, remember you have to wrap it up. Mr. Speaker, I do not support the concept that a ticketed approach should be used because in essence, you're opening up a marijuana medicinal industry, but at the same time, seeking to extract hard-earned cash from the poor young people in the constituency of South Central Winwood. Mr. Speaker, that is my contribution on this um, exercise, Mr. Speaker. I say, let's transition St. Vincent and the Grenadines from a welfare society to a workfare society. That's my contribution, Mr. Speaker.